Welcome traders to the first live trade analysis session of 2022 with me, Patrick Murray. If you can hear me and you can see the welcome screen, if you type a Y in the chat box so I know we are good to go. Great stuff. Okay, so before we jump into today's session, first and foremost, want to adhere to the risk disclaimer. Most importantly for today's session, uh, the views expressed by me today are solely mine. They're not indicative of or representative of those held by Tickmill UK or Tickmill Europe Limited. Um, before I jump into the presentation, uh, just a bit of housekeeping. In terms of uh, any questions you might have, if, uh, if you have a question regarding a chart that I review or you'd like me to take a look at a chart that I don't review in my deck, um, if you can make a note of those or drop them into the q and I won't answer them in real time, but at the end of the presentation, I'll go back and check back on the questions and, uh, and cover them all off uh, before we close out the presentation. So for those of you who are here for the first time, a brief introduction to myself. Like I say, my name is Patrick Munley, and after I graduated from King's College London, I joined a City PLC consulting firm. Uh, left with some colleagues and went on to successfully co-found and exit a consulting startup which was focused on C-suite executive search for technology businesses. I essentially had a front row seat to the dot-com bubble, witnessing people make and lose a fortune in the markets, sometimes quite literally overnight. So I decided to explore my curiosity for markets with some capital to play with and some time on my hands. I started day trading the S&P 500, or probably more appropriately day gambling, and after some early beginner's luck, I managed to rack up some pretty solid gains. However, as is often the case, my beginner's luck ran out. And as the market phase changed, I began to average down into what would become pretty significant losing positions, giving back all my gains and ultimately taking a six-figure hit on my personal capital. Now, to say this was a gut-wrenching and sobering experience is an understatement. I really had to stand back and figure out if it was feasible for me to make a living from the markets. So I decided to get serious about trading and sought out a mentor with an excellent trading track record. Working with my mentor for a period of 18 months to two years, it was a time during which I had not just my technical game in terms of researching, developing, sensibly back and forward testing strategies that crucially suited my personality, and all of which were underpinned by a rigorous risk management approach. But most importantly, during the period of mentorship, I significantly developed my mental game. And probably most importantly of all, I made the watershed shift from being a highly goal-oriented individual focused on financial gains to becoming purely process-oriented. So what are the implications of that and what does that mean? Well, it means I had to stop focusing on what I could make from the markets and start focusing solely on managing my mindset to allow me to consistently execute my trading strategy, oftentimes in the face of negative feedback from the markets in the form of losing trades. But... Once you become process orientated and you have a professional trading mindset and you understand the true nature of trading being simply a numbers game in which you're playing the probabilities, you lose the emotional investment, that hellish emotional roller coaster of living and dying by the outcomes of individual trades. So I'm no longer concerned with the outcome of individual trades or even a small string of trades. My focus is on the next hundred trades because I know my focus on excellence in execution my edge will demonstrate itself over an extended series of outcomes. My multi-strategy approach has delivered profitable annual returns since 2008. Since 2013, I've been managing investor capital through a managed account service, again, delivering annual positive returns. I'm currently responsible for managing a multi-million dollar portfolio. Since 2010, I've mentored hundreds of private traders of all experience levels, from complete novices to former CME floor traders in developing the technical and mental skills to reap consistent returns from the markets. In addition to my fund management and mentoring, I'm the resident market expert for Tickmill, exclusively providing market and trade analysis. I provide an in-depth daily market outlook, breaking down the fundamental and technical drivers for the day ahead. I also provide uh, technical trade setup videos for three to five markets per day uh, through the Tickmill Trading View accounts. I also uh, most recently run Ticknell's rapidly growing e-mini strategy Facebook group, where I post a daily video outlining my pre-market trade plan for the cash trading session ahead. 
I give my bias for the day ahead and specific action areas where I'm looking to engage the markets. These pre-market plans have delivered over 1,800 points of profits since we launched the group uh, April last year. The second uh, strategy group I run for Tickmill is for traders who really want to take their trading to the next level. The Tickmill Futures Trading Telegram group is a real-time environment where on a daily basis I share in-depth insights, analysis and trades. I also live stream during the opening hour of the cash session from New York, where traders can essentially look over my shoulder and watch in real time as I dissect the markets and identify asymmetric trading opportunities. These live trade sessions essentially act as a platform, helping you to develop a professional, consistent approach to navigating the markets and obviously the mental mind games that have to be mastered for you to make it as a professional trader. So that gives you a flavor of where it is I'm coming from. And what we're going to do now is jump in to the charts. Actually, what I'll do first of all, there are a few links um, just with regards to what I was covering there. Uh, one of those is the uh, Tipmill uh, Futures Facebook group. That's a, a free uh, service. All you have to do is request access to the group and you can follow along with my uh, daily trade plans. For those that are interested in learning more about the Telegram group, I'll post my uh, LinkedIn profile there and you can direct message me uh, for further information regarding that, uh, that service. Okay, so let's most importantly now jump into the charts. We're going to work on the, the daily timeframes today. A bunch of what I perceive to be swing trading opportunities developing. Um, we're going to start with the S&P 500. I'm trading the E-mini futures contract, the front month. Uh, continuous futures contract, but you can just adjust this if you're trading uh, the S&P spot contract through an MT4 provider. Um, so uh, you just have to adjust the levels for the spread. Uh, so with respect to the, uh, the S&P here, we, uh, we made new all time highs into the start of the year. Uh, you'll remember for those who were involved um, or thought were involved in these sessions, the back end of last year, I had long positions running from this last pullback and uh, took out a good chunk of uh, profits on those and um, essentially covered those positions or got taken out on trailing stops into the beginning of this week. And then we started to notice that uh, there's some pretty significant divergence de developing here. And so we were starting to lean uh, towards the short side in terms of the, uh, the groups that I run and, uh, and the signals I, I provide. Uh, we had um, short setups in the S&P 500 or the E-minis. Uh, we also had similar in the NASDAQ. We'll talk about that in a minute. But, but with respect to these E-minis, I, um, I think we are potentially going to complete the first leg to the downside. And just for this uh, product alone, I'm going to open up the hourly chart and show you exactly what it is I'm talking about. This is a five-wave sequence developing here, and I'm looking for prices to test into the 4640 area to complete that initial five wave sequence. From there, what I'd be anticipating is that we get uh, momentum divergence develop here. So what I'd anticipate is that uh, the psych indicator here rolling into resistance, we get uh, the psych indicator pulling back down as price makes a new low into that uh, support zone. But what I will be watching for is for the momentum study here to fail to make new lows and to set up a divergent move. And then that will allow for prices to correct versus this swing here. And ideally we'll get a move back into uh, this 47.50, 47.47 47 area. And then from there, what I'll be watching for is bearish reversal patterns again to get back in on the short side to play for another leg of corrective action to the downside. So um, that's, uh, that's pretty specific levels to, to pay attention to got daily and weekly projected range support just below that uh, psychological 4650 area. So just as the market gets really uh, bearish here on this decline, I think we have the potential for a snapback before then getting the next leg to the downside. So pay attention to, uh, to those levels if this current overlay uh, continues to map as I anticipate it will do. So back to the daily charts. So that's the S&P 500. I'm ultimately looking for prices to, uh, to take out uh, potentially take out trend line support here through the 46.15 and then get a test back down into uh, 45.30s is going to be a pivotal level. We've got projected monthly range support, 44.97. And then from there, we might get uh, a more uh, 
protracted corrective phase, but certainly uh, we're looking, uh, looking weak here as we open up the year. So the NASDAQ, this is the position I'm running at the moment. And uh, again, gave this trade in the, in the Telegram group live yesterday. Uh, I identified a, a pattern here that I, I play pretty regularly. We got this double top and we got an outside uh, rejection candle uh, the day before yesterday. And then we have since extended to the downside and running about 250 points of profit in this. I'm looking for a test of the trend line support here and the monthly projected range, range support down to 15,420. Uh, from there, we could see a bit of a pop, but ultimately I'm looking for us to test into uh, 1449 here um, is the, the, the key level I'm looking for on this, uh, on this position trade. So we'll see how that plays out. I want to pay close attention to how price responds at the trend line. But if we think about the tests on this trend line, we're looking at multiple, multiple tests now. And uh, for those that have worked with me for a while, you'll know that after the third test of the trend line, I'm pretty much looking for it to, uh, to give way. So this, uh, this trend line looks to be weakening to my mind, and we should erode it in time and get, uh, get a nice drift to the downside. Chart here. That's, um, that I don't often talk about, um, but is, uh, is relevant given what we're seeing in terms of uh, liquidity drying up from the Fed. Uh, this is the ARK Innovation Fund run by uh, renowned hedge fund manager, uh, Kathy Wood. It has, uh, it's been rolling over pretty heavily. Uh, I talked about this a couple of times last year where we start to see weakness develop. I'm looking now for, uh, for this to actually test down into the 70 handle. Now, from there, um, if we get this, uh, if we get this move, then uh, we could see a, a decent pop there, back up into uh, the hundred hundred dollar figure, and then we'll see how uh, price responds there. But certainly, we want to pay attention to how we trade at the 70 handle. We're currently trading 86 dollars in that uh, in that fund. And um, if well, the reason why I, 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 I'm Pulling this up to you guys is it's got a similar um, it's a similar uh, momentum play as to the Nasdaq. Obviously, the Nasdaq is a little bit more broad weighted, and we have some um, idiosyncratic members of the Arc Fund. But essentially, uh, this this move that we've seen or the move that we saw in this Arc Innovation Fund was pr predominantly driven by Fed liquidity, and as that started to dry up, we're starting to see weakness develop. And that's a similar story to the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ is far more yield sensitive. Um, so if we are going to see uh, yields uh, take a pop in terms of the US, and don't get me wrong, I'm certainly not loading the boat here in terms of uh, playing one side or the other. I'm very much, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm trading the market. I'm not looking to, to take on uh, lifelong positions here or get married to positions. I can see that very easily a path where by um, the current view on inflation and the fact that the Fed got it wrong with it being transitory and that we're going into a hyperinflation phase could actually reverse pretty quickly uh, based upon, you know, just the pandemic move from being pandemic to endemic. Uh, as such, then what's the what's the growth scenario, the growth picture, et cetera. So it's important not to, to get sucked into a narrative. Remember, we're three days into the trading year here. Um, and, and suddenly everyone is on one side of the boat. And historically, when that happens, what we tend to see, especially if you think about last year, came into the year and um, the narrative being pushed at the beginning of the year was we were going into uh, you know, an epic phase of dollar weakness. And lo and behold, that didn't play out at all. And we actually saw the dollar make a decent, uh, decent bid last year. And so this year we're coming in and traders are heavily positioned now for this dollar move to extend. And if you look at um, positioning data, you know, we're sitting up around those 2018 highs the last time the Fed uh, thought they were going to make a move in terms of rates. And we didn't really see that transpire. And so just a word of caution in terms of, especially as we're in these first few weeks of the year, there's a common effect called the January effect, whereby, um, you know, we can often see some pretty pivotal highs and lows posted in January. So, you know, as, just keep, keep, a, keep a flexible mindset is my, um, is my advice and don't get married to, to any market narratives being pushed uh, in these early parts of the year. So, um, so yeah, the ARK Innovation Fund, NASDAQ kind of link, and I like to, uh, to pay attention to that, that dynamic. 
Dow Jones looking at potential broadening top scenario here. Got a test yesterday. Dow, ironically, um, the strongest out of the uh, the indices at the moment. Obviously, it's a little bit more um, value orientated as opposed to growth. Obviously, growth was you know booming during the, the Fed liquidity, and now when you have people moving into safety, you get uh, you tend to see the Dow do a little bit better. But well, ultimately, if these uh, these equity markets are rolling over, it'll take the Dow with it. Might just be a bit of a slower grind for the Dow this time round. The DAX. Looking at a potential double top here. Yeah, what we pay attention to in this scenario is what is uh, what's the momentum saying? The momentum is telling us that this is uh, this is starting to struggle here. The DAX. Well, all I'm waiting for here will be the momentum to, to flip uh, bearish, and I think we have a move down in the DAX to get back into uh, fourteen thousand three hundred sixty four. And then from there, we might try and stabilize and get another uh, push to the upside. Obviously, that scenario will be wrong and a close back through 16,400. And then we'll start to pay attention to can we get up into the trend line resistance and how does price uh, respond there? The VIX, this is another position I'm running at the moment, shared in the Telegram group. Uh, had a couple of entries. I was looking for a few more. I ideally wouldn't see the VIX down into this, uh, this real sweet spot here. Uh, at the 15 handle, didn't get that, but I got fills in terms of um, 19, uh, 18 and 17. So I've got a 1750 uh, break even position running at the moment. And, um, and we'll see now what this VIX is going to do. Obviously, the VIX, is, yeah, people refer to it as the fear gauge. Uh, when we see weakness in terms of equity markets, we see strength in the VIX. When we see strength in the equity markets, we tend to see the VIX uh, trading lower. And uh, what you, the, the old adage for traders is buy protection when you can, not when you have to. So every time, um, and I've highlighted this trade a bunch of times, every time we get down into this, uh, this demand zone here in terms of the VIX, it's always been a, a, a fairly decent trade to play um, to, uh, to start acquiring long exposure in the VIX and uh, it looks to be working again. And so we'll see how that one plays out. Now let's move into the all important uh, 10 year notes here. These are, uh, are obviously driving a lot of the market action at the moment. So what we have or what I've been tracking here is a big uh, equality objective. So versus the highs that we saw here, we have this swing structure here into the 135.60. So I'm looking for 125.19s to ultimately trade before we see a meaningful correction. So any move now into this S3 zone, we can see it pop back into these prior lows here, 129.20s, but ultimately we want to see this, uh, this 125.19 test. And then from there, we may see uh, a pretty decent bounce in terms of the, uh, the notes. So obviously the notes trade price. So as the price declines, the yield increases. So if we look at the yield here, we're trying to make a breakout um, in terms of the yield of uh, trend line resistance coming in, just above 2.2% in terms of uh, in terms of the uh, the ten year yield, if we zoom out here, I'll show you what um, I've been tracking. So what I'm anticipating is that we're kind of in this. Uh, we've broken out here, and I'm looking for yields to extend to, to make new highs. But a one two seven extension there before we saw a pullback. So we get a one two seven extension here at two sixteen. Got the trend line two twenties. And to be honest with you, you know, if, if that move plays out, let's say into the March meeting whereby you know that yesterday the, the pricing for the March uh, futures contract uh, moved to an 80% chance that we would see a rate move at that meeting. Again, when the market gets loaded up in one direction, more often than not, there's a meaningful shakeout. And so any, any test of 2% or just above 2% could well be the high that we see uh, for the year in terms of yields uh, is, is a possibility. Um, equally, we could we could fail here on the test back through that one uh, one point seven eight, and we could be back down here testing the trend line before trying to make another run. So again, just don't get married to this view. It's very popular at the moment. It's a narrative that's been pushed by uh, by a lot of desks that uh, that you know we're going to see a yield explosion. Could we could well see that, but we want the price to really start to uh, to track in this type of scenario to uh, to encourage that view. To my mind, dollar index. Obviously, 
um, a beneficiary of any uh, any move in yields, or it should be, as uh, as the dollar is considered to uh, to drive uh, drive returns there. What I'm looking for ultimately in the dollar is I'm looking for one more high, and I'm going to be looking to fade that high. Uh, I'm looking for a move into the uh, the 98 handle here. That's a 61.8 percent retracement of the entire decline uh, prior to this uh, this move to the upside. Certainly from there, I'll be watching for bearish reversal patterns to do something on the short side, at least looking for a move back into 95.50. If we take out this trend line, then look out below because uh, this correction could be over in terms of the dollar. But if we hold there, then again, we want to think about the next leg to the upside in terms of the dollar index. But uh, for now, that's going to be the key area to watch this 98.40s in terms of the dollar as we head into the early part of this year. Gold. Um, the never-ending triangle trade here in terms of gold. I'm watching for any move down into monthly projected range support. 1753 is the level to pay attention to, 1750. Bullish reversal patterns there, and I think this could turn out to be a bear trap. And uh, I'm looking for an extension back through the trend line resistance and up into the 1900 area and, uh, and beyond to 1950. Obviously, you take out the trend line on a closing basis, all bets are off. And I think we'll be back down taking a look at 1680 uh, pretty quickly in terms of gold. Silver. Now, silver has a nice, uh, nice potential wedge pattern developing here. And, uh, and I'm going to be watching how we trade if we get a test here into the $20 handle. And, uh, and I think that could be an opportunity to, uh, to play for a correction in terms of silver or maybe quite a meaningful uh, low in place there. Uh, for silver, so watching that twenty dollar level and uh, and the wedge scenario to, uh, to potentially play out. Crude oil, testing some key levels here. Um, if we can, if we hold below eighty, I can easily see another leg to the downside in terms of crude back into the fifty five. It's high volume mode for the uh, that entire advance off the pandemic lows there. Um, so let's see. This this area is going to be pivotal. If we, uh, if we fail here, watch for bearish reversal patterns. I think there's an opportunity for, uh, for another leg to the downside before we try and make a, a meaningful correction in terms of crude. Again, a uh, common narrative at the moment is this commodity super cycle, which was really the story of last year, but I, I was just heard this morning, uh, Jeff Curry, the, the Goldman guy, uh, back on the line talking about that. More often than not, when you get these big investment banks pushing that type of narrative, it's because they're either looking to release inventory or acquire inventory. So when they're talking about this commodity super cycle, I'm just wondering, uh, have they got too much inventory on their books and they're looking to offload some exposure? So that's uh, something to pay attention to. Bitcoin, having a, uh, a rough old time of things, I'm looking for a test of 40,600. This is the major... Ascending trend line support, that'd be the third test. Watch for bullish reversal patterns there. If we get through this trend line back through 48,000, then uh, we could see an attempt to the upside here. If we let go through the trend line on a closing basis, stand aside because we will be back trading below 30,000 in quite a clip, uh, to my mind anyway. So uh, approaching some key levels here in, uh, in the Bitcoin, Ethereum, I think this has got more work to do at the moment on the downside. You can see uh, we are trading into the 61.8, uh, 78.6% extension from this swing high here. So likely some consolidation there, but ultimately I think we test uh, 2,900, which is the equality objective versus the swing structure from 41.88. Then we'll see what we can do from there. Maybe we've got to take a look at trendline support down to 23.36 before uh, we're going to see any meaningful stabilization there. But uh, there's certainly at this stage with these um, cryptos, uh, a bit of the, well, quite a lot of the froth is coming out of the market. And, um, and I shared uh, in the Telegram group this morning, we're not seeing um, institutional money flow, um, that, or the institutional money flow that was anticipated certainly isn't uh, isn't in play at the moment. Now that can change obviously quickly. And if you do get that institutional flows coming in, then uh, this, this can turn around pretty quickly. But at the moment, we're not seeing that um, in the flow data. And so there's certainly no rush to be jumping in 
in terms of the crypto space at the moment. <clears throat> Dolly Yen, let's look at some of these FX majors. So Dolly Yen is, uh, is testing the 127 extension of the last leg to the downside, natural area for, think for, for a pause. Um, but ultimately what I'm looking for with this Dolly Yen now is uh, if we can get this type of scenario. So we have our one, two, there's our three, four, and a fifth wave extension up into the equality objective versus the swing low here, 108.67. And that will kind of tie in with, you know, the dollar yen tends to have a, uh, a correlation with yields. So that push up in yields. And I think from there, we could see a more meaningful pullback in terms of the dollar yen. Uh, but for now, whilst we, uh, whilst we hold above the, uh, the 115.50, uh, I think we've got more room to run on the upside in terms of dollar yen. Dollar CAD. This one's got a bit of work to do before it gets interesting for me, but certainly if we get back down into this yearly pivot, 125, uh, I think we've got a shot, moonshot there at 132, which is the equality objective versus this swing structure here and the 122.90 is low. So um, keeping an eye on that, nothing to do with immediately. Euro dollar, tracking this wedge now. So similar to the, the dollar index, I'm looking for one more washout here in terms of the euro dollar similar similarly obviously the dollar index i'm looking for one more high this 78.6 percent retracement is the key level to watch 110 just above 110 if we see buyers stepping in on any flush here i think we could have a meaningful low in place in terms of the dollar you'll now i shared that weekly chart which shows similarities between the uh, 0102 phase of uh, of the euro dollar and what we're looking at, at the moment this 78.6 percent 78.6 Cent area is going to be key. We've got a weekly trend line coming in there as well. If we take that out on a closing basis, certainly on a weekly closing basis, um, that could uh, that could uh, that could be a sign of something quite uh, quite significant. But for now, this is going to be the focus. And if we can uh, if we can find support there, I think we could be in for uh, for a new phase in terms of the euro dollar, euro sterling. Looking for it to test the descending trend line. Uh, third test here. So if we can get a test below or just above 83, watch for bullish reversal patterns there. I think we get a washout move uh, to the upside, take out some of the, uh, the shorts here, back into 87.40, which is the major descending trend line resistance. This is one I'm paying close attention to. It could be a decent swing trade there. Similarly with Sterling. Looking for Sterling to get into the um, trend line resistance here. Uh, 135.20s, no, sorry, 136.20s, got the yearly pivot there as well, weekly range resistance, watch for bearish reversal patterns there, we've still got an open target versus the 138.38 high, uh, and a quality objective down to 130, and we've got the uh, high volume node there, so if we, um, if we can get in there, then maybe that's the area where Sterling can put in a more meaningful move, obviously if we close through trend line resistance, then we want to start to think about pullbacks and extensions to the upside. Sterling Aussie, one of my favorite setups is um, the quality objectives that complete into double or triple tops. And we've got one here versus this swing low, um, 183.86 is. So we have a potential five wave sequence here that could complete into a double top, uh, 191.69. And uh, we watch for divergence here as, uh, as an opportunity to do something on the short side and I'd be thinking about uh, the yearly pivot here, back down into 184 and the ascending trend line support, third test. And then from there, maybe we mount something more serious on the upside, but pay, certainly want to pay close attention to this potential double top. Sterling yen, similar scenario here. Uh, we've got a five wave sequence, just take out these prior highs into the ascending trend line resistance. Uh, just at 160s, watch bearish reversal bands there. I think we get back down into the apex of this consolidation zone, back into 154 would be what I'd be watching for. Sterling Kiwi, this is one that uh, I was tracking. Let's see where we close today. If we can get a close back below the trend line, then maybe we're, we're done here for now. If we don't and we take out the trend line and we get up into, let's say, the 202, 260s and he pulled back to the trend line will be buying opportunities for an extension higher this was a good trade from last year the inverse head and shoulders and ran about uh, running out 400 plus pips of, uh, of profit there the aussie um ultimately i'm looking for the aussie to test this equality objective 
versus the swing high here at uh, the 75, 60 area gives us 66, 60s. And so if you think about that dollar CAD, these, got, these pairs often trade inversely. That, uh, that would have that 132 test for the dollar CAD. So let's see, we're in an area here where we could, we could be looking at a double correction. So we do this, get back into that trend line and then get that move. Or um, we take out, let's just draw this in. We take out this trend line, the S3, the weekly uh, projected range support coming in 71.30s. We've got momentum rolling over bearish here. If we do that, then uh, it could be that the move is already starting. But my sense is we probably have to, we're probably looking at a double correction there for now in the Aussie. Um, Aussie yen. Nothing for me to do there at the moment. Um, let's just look the Kiwi. Kiwi, similar, similar scenario um, to the Aussie. We've got a 65-55 target on the Kiwi versus the swing high here at 72.23. Now, if we take out uh, the 66.90s, then I think we're heading there um, pretty much in a straight line will be the scenario. But whilst we hold support here, 67.40s, again, potential we do a double before then rolling over to ultimately get that test before we make a, a more sustained correction. So that's a whistle stop tour, so to speak, of what it is I'm looking at as we head into uh, the opening few weeks here of the, uh, of the new trading year. Pay close attention to these equities. I think there are some great opportunities there. And um, some of these uh, metals also have opportunities. And then those, uh, those FX majors that I've just highlighted. Certainly keep an eye on that euro sterling. I think that could be, uh, could be a really decent opportunity in, uh, in the coming sessions like that setup. And um, the Euro uh, Sterling Aussie uh, quality objective into a double top. Love that as long as we get some nice um, momentum divergence. So are there any questions or would anyone like me to take a look at a chart I haven't covered? Just type the name into the chat box or the Q&A box. Equally, if you don't have a question, an N in the chat box is just as useful as, uh, as I know we're on the same page. And, uh, and we can wrap this up. Thanks, Ben. Um, the links I posted there, uh, to one other link I'll post actually that um, this will allow you to, uh, to keep up to speed with the trades um, in between these weekly sessions. Uh, you can subscribe, uh, sorry, not subscribe, you can follow uh, the Tickmill Trading View uh, Trade Ideas uh, account there and you'll get updates on a daily basis of the trades that I'm tracking and, and, uh, and taking. Okay, guys, I'm going to wrap this session up here. As always, traders, plan the trade, trade the plan. Most importantly, manage your risk. Until next week, thanks very much.